Hello, everyone, and welcome to podcast. This is Jill. From last week's podcast, we talked about how to take geniuses to help you move your life forward. Today, we're going to try to take the example from Michael J. Gelb and his book, Discover Your Genius, and apply it to other people. Humans are allergic to change. They love to say, we've always done it this way. I try to fight that. That's why I have a clock on my wall that runs counterclockwise. Grace Hopper. In the last podcast, we talked about the book, Discover Your Genius. And he picked geniuses with high IQs and from the past to admire and drop a journal so that you could use their genius to help you move your life forward. There's nothing wrong at all with trying to take someone who is a known genius, try to use them through your genius notebook to change your life. But I think you don't have to go that far. I think you can pick people who aren't necessarily geniuses, who just do some things right. No one is perfect in this world. So I want to challenge you not to just think about geniuses, but think about people who stand out on amazing traits and can teach you something about how you could live your life better. They don't have to be geniuses. They don't have to be from the ancient world. They don't have to be from history. They don't have to be well-known. They could be anyone that has a trait that you admire. And make sure you do the notebook. It's really easy for us to hear something like, start a notebook and write about your geniuses. People don't often do that. The notebook is really what makes it lasting in your life. Because as that person does different things, Your notebook can make note of that. As you learn something new about that person that you didn't know before, you can make note of that too. Maybe even if it's a pitfall, you can find out how that person failed in their life and try to avoid those pitfalls too. Honestly, everybody fails. To some extent, the more powerful, the more well-known you are, sometimes the more well-known your pitfalls are too. You can use those as examples in your notebook to learn from. So let's do a quick review of what it is we learned in the last podcast about how to take someone who's a genius and turn it into your genius notebook. First, you want to create a summary of achievements, quick bio of all the different landmarks they made in their lives. Then you want to answer the question, how does that relate to you? Why is it that you admire this activity, this particular trait, this particular person's life, and how it is beneficial to you. What do you think that you could learn from that? Then you want to write up a list of traits and indicate which traits you share with that person and which ones you don't share that you could really cultivate, that you'd really want to strengthen if maybe you just have a little bit of that trait. Then identify what that trait looks like to you every day. If it's about courage, how could you be more courageous in your life? If it's about speaking up in the face of injustice, what does that mean in your life? Not all of us get a chance to speak to large bodies of people to explain to them the injustices of the world. But what could you do? Next, you want to see how this particular item fits in your dreams, your goals, anything that you wish to attain. Then you want to focus on how this character, this trait, this person could help you in your love life, in your work life and in your daily personal life. And then the last thing he did was some kind of creative challenge. For example, if we're talking about a poet, maybe you write some poetry. Maybe if we're talking about a painter, you do a drawing. Something that will really expand your idea of this person by doing something that's a little bit like they do. But just something more creative that will let you have a little bit of insight about what it's like to be them. The first person we're going to talk about today is The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and some of his achievements and how you could try to apply some of his activities to your life. At 19, he became a member of the Miami Hurricanes and became a winner of the National NCAA Championship. And at 24, he was one of the best wrestlers in the world and became an intercontinental WWF champion. At 26, he became an actor. And was in that 70s show. I even saw him on a Star Trek episode when he was 28. Who knew The Rock was in Star Trek? At the age of 30, he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for the greatest fee in a starring role. He got $5.5 million for that. He's been in Fast and Furious. 
He was in Disney's Moana. And he even has a TV show called Young Rock, which is adorable and a fun show. And maybe is even about him running for president. I don't know. He's been known to have cheat days that consist of almost 5,200 calories. That's like 10 pounds of food a day. He also has the Dwayne Johnson Rock Foundation, which helps troubled youths. So he's had a very impressive life. So what are some traits we can take away from The Rock? First of all, he's really smart. He likes to take risks, which you can see throughout his life. When he didn't know what to do, he found good mentors and he picked good people to hang out with. He used to hang out with Andre the Giant. But throughout his life, he found people who could help him be a better person. Whenever he had a failure, he pushed through it. But then later in his own life, he pushed himself through failure and became something else. At one point, he became injured and could no longer play football. So he had to push himself to become something else. He's very competitive, but even with himself, it's one thing to compete against other people, but it's a whole other thing to decide to do better than you did the last time. Improve your best record. He's very charismatic. He reinvents himself all the time. He's very good with humor. And he loves to talk to everyone. He's one of those stars who will sign autographs and talk to his fans. And he's very good at social media. Okay, great. So let's take a look at The Rock. So I might look at it and say, well, how does it relate to me? I want to be a famous podcaster. So can I take those traits, those things that The Rock does really well when it comes to humor and charisma and social media, take some risks and become a better podcaster? What traits do I share with The Rock? Well, I like to think I'm funny. I'm not as funny as The Rock is, though. I also try to talk to everyone, whether they like it or not. So I'm always out there meeting with people and seeing how they are. Then the question is, what traits can I cultivate that I'm not very strong in? And that's taking risks. And maybe I could do better with it like The Rock does. And so how do those traits look like every day? And that might be just being more bold with people, telling them the truth when maybe I want to couch the truth just to protect myself. I could be more bold. And how does this fit into my dreams? Well, if I want to be a star podcaster, I'm going to have to do all of those things better to become better known in the podcasting world. For a creative challenge, I was thinking about what could I do that would emulate The Rock? And I decided that to emulate The Rock, I'm going to have a cheat day like he has. And then I thought better of it. And so instead, I decided that I'd rather take a record that I have and try to beat it myself. And maybe because I applied this to my podcast, it would be total listeners. So I'm going to do a better job of being more bold and asking you to share my podcast with a friend. That could be my creative challenge. Maybe I'll become better at social media. To be honest with you, I'm not very good at it. So maybe I should take a look at how The Rock does social media and start to pick up tips from him. Okay, so now we just took a genius and tried to bring it in to help our own lives. We won't go into as much detail in every single one of these, but I want to give you the idea of how this works. So let's take a look at Charles Schultz. He wrote the comic strip Peanuts. So in February of 1943, he was in World War II. When he got back, he took a job as an art instructor and helped students learn how to draw. He started his first cartoon called Little Folks, and it was published in 1947 to 1950. Some of the characters you know from Peanuts was from there. And in 1950, on October 2nd, Peanuts made its debut in seven newspapers. Eventually, it would go on to be in 2,600 newspapers in 75 countries in 21 languages. And in 50 years, he drew almost 18,000 Peanuts strips. Think about this, and I'm going to turn this back on you. How does that relate to you? Is there something in there that you could take that could help you live your life better every day? Think about some of the traits he had. He persevered. It's not easy being in a war. And he did cartooning. And there really wasn't a big career in being a cartoonist. But he developed almost an industry of being a known cartoonist and inspired lots of people who's in cartooning today. He was inspired by his faith. He developed his art so he could become better at it. He suffered a stroke and learned how he could draw the Peanuts comic strip 
even with the disability that came along with his stroke. He loved to bring in people he knew and loved, and he tried to treat others with kindness. He used his art to promote things like the space program and other things that he loved. So the question is, out of all those traits, what are some traits that you could cultivate and strengthen? And what would those traits look like every day? Could you be kinder to people? Could you persevere more in the face of hardship? Or maybe you want to use your gifts to promote things you believe in, like the space program. Do these traits fit into your dreams, your love life, your work life? So then comes the creative challenge. My challenge to you is come up with a list of characters in your pretend comic strip. Not all of us are artists, so we couldn't draw a comic strip. But if you did do a comic strip, what would be the list of characters you would have in your comic strip? And what would each character represent? Our next person is Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. If you don't know her, she's an amazing woman, an amazing human being. And a lot of the computer world we have today wouldn't exist if it wasn't for her. So I highly recommend learning more about Grace Hopper. So first of all, she created a theory of computer programming language that was later used for the COBOL programming language. She got her PhD in mathematics from Yale and was a professor of math at Vassar College. She tried to join the Navy in World War II, but was rejected because she was 34 years old. So instead, she joined the Naval Reserve and started doing computer work in 1944, where she worked on the UNIVAC. And the UNIVAC is a famous computer in the history of computers. It was, I think, the size of a city block, but was one of the very first computers out there that did serious work. In fact, I believe it was a moth flew inside the UNIVAC computer and she called it a bug. And to this day, when you have a problem with your computer, it's a bug. She said, I squashed it. So when she retired from the Navy Reserve, the Navy recalled her and put her back on active duty. Then 20 years later, she retired from the Navy again and started working for the Digital Equipment Corporation which was a big name in computing in the mid-80s. She has a guided missile destroyer, the USS Hopper, named for her. She has 40 honorary degrees from around the world. She received the National Medal of Technology and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She is known for a lot of really amazing quotes. She said, A ship at a port is safe, but that's not what ships are for. Sail out to sea, do new things. You don't manage people, you manage things. You lead people. She just has such an amazing list of quotes that are out there. So for her traits, first of all, she was very smart. By getting into computers when no one really did, by being a math professor, when she got stuck like she couldn't join the Navy, she found a different way and joined the Naval Reserve. She always found a way around the problems she was looking at. She was witty. You can tell that by her quotes. She didn't say things just because it was the correct thing to say. She spoke her mind. She was honest, and she really cut through the baloney of whatever was going on. She was a big believer in mentorship. She said once, the most important thing I accomplished, other than building a compiler, is training young people. They come to me, you know, and say, do you think I can do this? And I say, try it. And I back them up. That's being a great mentor. Every age in her life, she was always curious about gadgets, about mechanics, about mathematics, and that curiosity led her to greatness. So let's see if we can take a look at some of those things. How do those achievements relate to you? Are you a good gadget or mechanical person? Are you someone who could be a little bit more bolder when it comes to saying the honest thing? Can you find workarounds to places where you got denied your dream and make it work in a different way? Maybe you could be a great mentor and not only help people do the thing that they're planning on doing, but back them up, help them in real ways. And then try to figure out again, how does this relate to your life? What are some things that you could strengthen? And how does this fit into your dreams? Maybe as a creative challenge, you could come up with 10 amazing quotes that just cut through the baloney of whatever situation you see out there. Our next person is Frederick Douglass. He escaped from slavery. He taught himself how to read. He said, knowledge is the pathway from slavery to freedom. And on July 5th, 1852, 
He delivered a speech. What to the slave is the 4th of July? It was amazing. And one of the amazing things about him is he had every reason to be bitter, to be angry, and he never let any of that blind him. He never let any of that make him turn on the good things in life and became one of the greatest public speakers out there. And people came from miles around, both black and white, to hear him speak, tell lectures, to hear his story and listen to his message of hope. He didn't want to destroy things. He wanted to figure out how he could build them up so that they would actually live up to their promises. And he wrote three autobiographies. He said once, I prayed for 20 years, but received no answer until I prayed with my legs. That means that you have to act on your prayers, not just pray. So what can we take from the life of Frederick Douglass that will help us in our genius journal become better people? How can we use his traits of honesty? How can we look at the world around us and not try to destroy everything that's not perfect, but instead make it better? How can we look at things and make them live up to the promises they have? That's what he did. Or could we write books or give speeches about the ills in society we see around us and how we could make those better? Could we do that in such a way where our love and hope comes out instead of our anger, bitterness, that will poison your own soul and the souls around you. How can you be hopeful? So for a creative challenge, could you write a very small speech of hope when it comes to something you see going on in the world around you? How can you inspire people to do better? And then the last person we're going to talk about is Malala Yousafzai. She was the girl that was shot in the head by the Taliban when she was 15 years old in 2012. She was someone who stood up for education for girls and for children in Pakistan. Everyone around her believed in education, including her father, who created a school that would accept girls into the school. She wanted to become educated because those are the things that would empower her to get her goals. And she knew that she was already living in a very dangerous place with the Taliban around threatening girls who were getting educations. She became a secret blogger for the BBC and wrote about her perspective on life under the Taliban. And this blog was called The Diary of a Pakistani Schoolgirl. So when she did get shot in the head, her life was in mortal danger. As soon as she became stable enough through the urgent medical care that she got, she was transferred to Birmingham United Kingdom and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. There she had so many different surgeries. Her mother was afraid that she wasn't going to be the same girl anymore. She had to go through so much therapy to just get back to where she was. And then nine months after her shooting, she stood up at the United Nations in New York and gave an address to a specially convened youth assembly. But that's amazing because she had just been so injured and went through so many surgeries to get up and start speaking again in front of a large group of people when her life was still under danger was really amazing. And then what she said at her speech at the United Nations, when I look at 400 youth and people from more than 100 countries, I said, I am not only talking to the people of America and the other countries, I'm talking to every person in the world. She really wanted to make an impact. Her father was worried that this could be a very negative perception on the Pashtuns in Pakistan and of Muslims in general. You know what? She never wanted to do that. She's still a woman of faith. She's still a woman who believes in Pakistan, and she didn't want to throw the entire culture under the bus. She wanted to hold the individuals who were responsible for this instead. Her father said about her, she was holding a lamp of hope and telling the world, we are not terrorists. We are peaceful. We love education. To be able to take a hard situation like that and still be able to talk about her people in such a positive light really speaks to her character. In 2013, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. A German newspaper said in 2013 that she's the most famous teenager in the world. She went to school then in England and got all A's. She later went to school, despite having options from everyone, at the Lady Margaret Hall, which is part of the University of Oxford. 
In 2014, she became a co-recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. And in March of this year, it was announced that she's going to be partnering with Apple and working on dramas, comedies, documentaries for Apple TV. So those are some amazing achievements that a very young girl who's 24 today has had in her life. So let's take a look at some of the traits she has. She never gives up. She is really tenacious. I think a lot of people who have been through the things that she's been in would have given up and no one would have said a thing about it because of the hardship she had. She loves to communicate and tell people either through writing or speeches what's going on without throwing people under the bus or making her home or the people in her home the bad guys. She believes strongly in education. She's also a woman of faith. She overcame fright of the Taliban to become a writer and a speaker and then did it again to overcome her health challenges, the surgeries she went under, and all the therapies she had to go under. She's an amazing writer. She looks out for the rights of other people. She has compassion for all sorts of people and children throughout the world. If she's in a place where her situation is subpar or she's not capable or she's living under tyranny, she found ways to make it work and do things that are amazing. What can you do to take some of her traits and do something amazing in your own life? So think about some of the things that you're good at that she's good at or some things that you could probably improve on. What are some of those traits going to look like in your everyday life? Does that mean maybe you would start a blog to talk about what you see in the world or talk about the aspirations you have for something in your world? Are you going to find ways of either gaining more education or giving education? How can you teach other people something amazing? And how can all these traits and her genius fit inside of your own life? And for a challenge, why don't you try to write a blog article about something that's important to you? Even if you don't have a blog, just try writing a paragraph or two about a situation and do it with as much compassion and enthusiasm that you can give it. What would make the world a better place today if you could let people know about something? Well, those are a couple of people that we have where we can take amazing people, look at their traits and make them our own and achieve our own goals. Challenge. Last week, we challenged you on coming up with a list of 10 people you admire and starting your journal of geniuses. Who could you take and really use the lessons that they've learned in their lives, the traits that they have in their lives to make your life better, to make you make the world a better place? And our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Skyscraper with The Rock. We're going to get both to what he came here for. As soon as he has to drive, he'll kill us both. Maybe. But he is my daughter. Her life is what matters to me, not mine. Now I'm taking that drive to the roof. You could either be attached to it or not. It's your choice, Joe. All right. So what's the plan? Got any duct tape? The advice to have duct tape all the time, that's really important. Always have duct tape. All right, everyone, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. Remember to subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend. If I'm going to be The Rock and become a famous podcaster, I need your help in telling someone else about this podcast and sharing it with your friends. Thanks so much and have a great week.